Hello, boys and girls. How are you today? Welcome to our virtual VBS, and this is the catechism part. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Catherine Luther. I lived in the 1500s. That is over 500 years ago. Whoo, that was a long time ago. And anyway, I was mar am married to Martin Luther. Now, you might have heard of him before, especially if you're a Lutheran today. Martin Luther wrote what we call Luther's Small Catechism. And you might ask, well, why did he write that? Well, my Martin, he loved the Lord. And he went around, he was a pastor, a monk at the time, and then he left that and became a pastor. And he went around and he was noticing that people really didn't know what the Bible was teaching. And he thought, well, that's just not right. So he went and looked at the Bible. He studied the Bible all the time. And he came up with what we call the small catechism. He broke that down into six parts. Okay, so let me look here. Those six parts were, first of all, the Ten Commandments the Apostles' Creed, then the Lord's Prayer, Holy Baptism, Confession Absolution, and the Sacrament of the Altar. And then on each one of these parts, he would always ask the question, what does this mean? And so he would study it and he'd look in the Bible and he'd find the answers. So he would did this because he wanted it to be simple for little boys and girls like you and for moms and dads to understand what the Bible is telling us about Jesus. Okay, so we're going to look at the part that's called the Apostles' Creed, all right? Now, you guys, I'm sure, know this because I know you go to church and I know you've said it before. So we're going to read it together, all right? It begins... I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Familiar, wasn't it? Yeah, you knew that part. We're going to look at the part. It's called the third article, and it's the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, this part talks about the Holy Spirit, and we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit today and tomorrow. He is very important. You know, we have the triune God, we have God the Father, we have God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Catechism, there is a part that says, what does this mean? See, he always asks that question. He sometimes asks me too, and I don't always know the answer. Anyway, this first part says, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Okay, that was a lot of words. Yeah, that was a lot of words. So we're going to start with... I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. Now, I wonder why that is. Why is it that we can't believe in Jesus or go to him on our own? Well, you know the answer. It's because remember way in the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, God made Adam and Eve, and he let them go all over the garden, but there was the one tree of the knowledge of good and evil that he said, don't eat of it. Well, lo and behold, here comes that old serpent guy, and he got in there and he tempted Eve. Eve ate of the fruit, and then she gave some to Adam. And what that did is they disobeyed God, and so it separated them. 
And so God came looking for, um, for uh, Adam and Eve, well, Adam mainly, and um, he ended up kicking Eve and Adam out of the garden because they had disobeyed him. That's when sin entered into this world. Now, this sin that Adam and Eve committed was passed down to everybody. So now, anytime anybody is born, they have sin in them because it's called original sin, okay? So here we are. We or have this sin in us. And so when we're born, we don't want to go to God. We don't really know anything about God. He has to come to us. Well, God loves us very much and he didn't want us to be separated from him forever. So he sent us the Holy Spirit. Now let's read the second part. It says, the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. So it says here, the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. <laughs> Does that mean that he stands on the corner and says, hey you, hey you, let me tell you about the gospel. No, we don't see the Holy Spirit standing on the corner calling us like that, do we? No, we don't. Here, let's, let me demonstrate to you, boys and girls, how this kind of works, okay? Come with me. Okay, so this is how the Holy Spirit works. So I'm standing outside this door, as you can see, and I wanna get into this door, and just because I wanna see what's inside there, and I can't, see, it's, it's locked. So I'm thinking, well, how can I get in this door? I have no idea how to get in there. What are you trying to do? Well, I want to get in this door right here because I want to see what's in there, but I can't. Well, to get in this door, you have to have a key. Oh, well, do you have a key? I do have a key to get in this door. Oh. It's, it's much like, you know, the way that we get into to God's kingdom or, or members of his church. He does it through his word which is the key that opens it up to us. It's how the Holy Spirit works, you see. He doesn't just work mysteriously. He actually works through God's Word, the Bible, that tells us everything that Jesus did. You know, how He came, He died, He rose again and ascended into heaven, and all this for our salvation. And that's, that's how you get into God's kingdom. Do you want to go through this door into the church and hear more? Yeah, yeah, I do, okay. I do. I got a key right here. Okay. So you see, boys and girls, the Holy Spirit works through the Word, God's Word that He has given to us in the Bible. And every time that we hear God's Word, every time that we go to church like we're in today, every time that we do our devotions at home and the Word of God is spoken, the Holy Spirit is working. He's creating faith in your heart and He's um, giving you all the benefits that God promises um, as a child of God. So we aren't blind anymore, and we can now, with the Holy Spirit, do the things that God has called us to do. So it's pretty exciting. As Romans says, faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. And that's your Bible story today at Pentecost. Remember, everybody there was receiving the Holy Spirit and the flame of fire above their, above their heads. And um, so they were getting that special gift of the Holy Spirit, which gave them faith. Pretty cool the way God has set all of this up. Anyway, that's enough for today. I will see you tomorrow back here, same time, same place. Bye.